Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 4, Episode 6, and today we're going to be going over When Harry Met Harry, so that's the title of the episode. So this episode overall was a very fun episode, it was one of the best of the season, I think, and we're going to be going over all the plot points, all the easter eggs and stuff that I could spot out in this video. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos this year, because a lot of crossover stuff's happening, mon -El's coming back on Supergirl. We're getting a big thinker episode next week and it looks a lot better than the previous episodes of The Flash so you guys need to subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of these videos because the seasons are just getting better and better. So on to today's video, first off we're going to be talking a bit about Ralph Dibney. So in this episode we got to explore Ralph becoming a hero, him slowly learning how to actually become a hero. We actually got a nice call back to season one as we got a mugger that actually was in one of the season one episodes and he tried to mug Barry at gunpoint and again this guy comes back and he's out of prison for a while and he actually is the one trying to mug Ralph and Barry and Barry and Ralph use this situation to try and teach Ralph how to be a superhero and this was used as a bit of comedy because this shooter obviously is really stupid as you can tell and as we've seen in the past he actually shoots Ralph and it actually fires back at him so that was quite a nice use of comedy in that scene to be honest I did like that and throughout the episode Ralph actually failed to save a kid and that kid actually became you know the starting point for his hero journey to properly start as he realized it's more important to save people than actually to get the villain because people come first before actually the objective so Ralph actually slowly becomes a hero and he's realizing through all of these experiences what it means to be a hero and you know how he has to change as a person because the last five years or so he hasn't actually had to help anyone being a PI as he explained in the episode so Ralph was really good in this episode and we'll go over some more stuff to do with him later on. So Harry gets some new friends in the episode and Cisco names it the Council of Worlds and I'm sure you guys know this is a Rick and Morty easter egg and also a Fantastic Four easter egg because they've done iterations of that and I'm pretty sure it's the biggest influence from Rick and Morty because we know that Cisco probably definitely watches Rick and Morty he's just the type of guy to watch it and he calls the four worlds as the council of worlds so that's obviously influenced by that and in this episode we get to see Earth 12 worlds Wolfgang worlds and he actually does a German accent so I'm not sure why so I think that was just for comedy and it was pretty funny and I really enjoyed him he's sort of the more serious worlds out of the four worlds is that we actually meet in this episode and we get to meet Earth 47 Wells and he's actually called H. Lefario Wells and I'm not sure if I said that right but he's a billionaire probably one of the funniest Wells is there and I really enjoyed seeing him he sort of reminded me of HR a bit I don't know he was just quite amusing and the next Wells we saw was actually Wells 2.0 and he's from an earth where the earth is actually ravaged and it's a wasteland and he's half robot and Jesse Quick actually gouged out his eye and that's why he's half robot and he speaks in a New Zealand accent and that was hilarious. I really liked him and he seemed to be like a really cool character and I wish we could explore these more. Hopefully the Council of Worlds actually come back soon. And to be honest, I was hoping for a few more Worlds, but it was pretty funny. And we got a massive Lord of the Rings Easter egg when a unspecified version of Wells, we're not sure what Earth he's from, actually comes and he's called Wells the Grey. So he could potentially be a real wizard or he could just be cosplaying and it was hilarious. That's probably one of the highlights of the episode for me. And so that's a massive Lord of the Rings Easter egg as he's literally dressing up as Gandalf the Grey but being Wells the Grey and that was just hilarious. So in this episode... We got a new villain and the villain was called Black Bison and she's actually a villain in the comics but she's actually a male in the comics and they've changed it up. So she was probably one of the best new metas that we've explored. Better than the Weeper, better than Hazards, and better than Kilgore. So I would say that she's probably one of the best, but I think the Elongated Man is obviously the best one. And although I felt like her acting performance wasn't as good as some of the others, I felt like her character was more promising than the others, even though we didn't get very long to actually explore her character and her real motives. But her powers were actually really interesting. She could bring inanimate objects to life and got to see some cool things happen. That actually led on to us getting some really big easter 
Easter eggs when the dinosaur comes alive so that's a massive night at the museum Easter egg you guys should check out that film that's where it's from and then we had the elongating man versus that dinosaur that was an awesome fight we got another look at Ralph's powers and to what extent he can actually use it and in this fight scene we actually get a Jurassic Park Jeff Goldblum Easter egg and also in that scene Ralph actually drops an Indiana Jones Easter egg when he says this belongs in a museum so that's a really cool Easter egg and then moving on to some more Harrison Wells stuff so Harrison Wells in this episode realizes that he's really bad at making friends and that the reason why he's so bad is that he doesn't like himself and to like other people he needs to like himself first so he's coming to the realization that he's sort of got no life and that he needs to progress his self-image in order to actually make new friends so he begins to moan about his doppelgangers and then Cisco actually drops a massive Harry Potter easter egg as he says you're a wizard Harry he literally says you're a wizard Harry like what Hagrid actually said to Harry in the first film so that was an awesome easter egg I love getting these Cisco Harry Potter easter eggs and then by the end of the episode we've wrapped up all the Council of Worlds storylines they find out that his name is actually Clifford DeVoe via the Council of Worlds as they actually track it down and there's like an over 90% chance that this Clifford DeVoe is actually the DeVoe that's been messing with Team Flash and they actually go to DeVoe's house and they see that DeVoe is normal but we actually find out that the mechanic is his wife and that DeVoe is normal and I was really surprised when this happened because I expected there to be a full-on fight like DeVoe to fight them and obviously this is going to lead on to next episode because Barry becomes curious and he doesn't think that this innocent looking man in the wheelchair because in the past obviously a guy in the wheelchair was the main villain he still suspects that he's the real DeVoe actually screwing with them and we will be getting some really awesome flashbacks next episode so I'll talk about that in a bit and also check out my trailer breakdown later because we'll be discussing that as well and this leads us to the question is the thinker in the blue room actually real or is he fake or is this version of him fake and the thing that popped into my mind was maybe this is like a Sherlock Holmes type situation with a mind palace because remember he's the smartest man alive and I don't see why he couldn't insert the mechanic and himself into an actual mind palace like into his actual mind and I think maybe when he's in the blue room that's actually where they are and that his actual appearance is his normal self but the blue version of himself with all the stuff strapped to him is perhaps a different version of him and that is a projection from his mind because he's so powerful so I think something like that's gonna happen and one of them's not going to be real and I would say it would be pretty cool if the mind palace thing actually came into fruition because he's the smartest man alive I don't see why he couldn't do a Sherlock Holmes type situation but actually bring it to life with extra tech and last thing I want to talk about is this episode and the season so far has been very heavy on the comedy and some of it feels very forced and next episode in the trailer you can see that it looks a lot darker and I do hope it takes a much darker tone with less comedy because I really enjoy enjoyed the tone in season 2 and season 3 and the back half of season 1 where it wasn't too jokey. I feel like the jokes are kind of over the top at the moment. It works for some characters like Cisco, but then it doesn't work for some characters like Iris so much and I don't think that it's actually benefiting the show. I think the darker tone actually suits the show better and hopefully with next episode it looks like it's going to get a lot darker and hopefully throughout the season it becomes darker and darker because you would say as the thinker's plan goes on it would presumably get darker because Barry's going to have to make decisions that are going to be pretty dark and he's obviously going to have to defeat him somehow and it's not going to be easy. So anyway guys that's been my review for this episode so I will see you guys later thank you guys so much for watching please leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys later goodbye. Shut free.